Mr. Bigley! Hey there guys and gals, it's Gerbigly with another episode of Gaming with Gerbigly, and I'm once again playing the game Katua Shoujo, and the last episode we got to go painting with Rin, and we were also told by the nurse that we needed to exercise more, which we haven't been doing. Uh, apparently he had Emmy spying on us and indicating that we weren't using the facilities like the track or anything like that uh, to get our heart rate up a little bit because it is important for us to exercise a bit, even though too much physical activity can obviously kill so anyway, we're on the track now, and Emmy is uh, sort of just talking to us, um, kind of grilling us with questions, but overall uh, being pretty cool. Um, and uh, let's get to know her a little bit more. She scolds me enthusiastically, but then smiles and leans closer. I hate warming up too. <laughs> she laughs suddenly. Heck, and I don't even have to stretch my legs. Whoa, <laughs> and she's bouncing. As if to confirm her statement, she bounces up and down a couple of times, giving a passing expression of standing on a pair of springs. Her leg blades seem to be quite elastic. Let's go! Whoa! So we both take off around the track and I can immediately see that she wasn't lying about being good at running. Emmy moves fluidly, throwing herself into the run with a sort of wild abandon. I find myself concentrating more on running properly. Hands spread, right? And something about hitting on the balls of your feet rather than the heels. That is actually super important if you don't want, like, shin splints or, like, feet pain. Like, pain in your arches. I used to run track, actually, in, in high school, and I, I loved it. It was a lot of fun. I try to match my strata Emmys, but it's pretty difficult. Apparently, I'm not very good at it. Maybe Emmy could help me with that sometime. Bah. <laughs> I'm really not feeling up to more than a couple of laps today and slow to a walk pretty quickly. The blah wasn't to the Emmy thing, it was the fact that I read that sentence like I was from a different place. Like, space. <laughs> Emmy keeps running and doesn't seem to notice I've stopped until she passes a second time. She quickly skids to a halt, breathing steadily in contrast to my own somewhat gasping demeanor. Whoa! Finished already? I hang my head ruefully. <laughs> yeah. I'm not in very good shape right now. Emmy nods and then grins at me again. She seems to be doing a lot of smiling. Well, the important thing is you started, right? Next time you just have to try to hold out longer, and then longer, and longer, and eventually you'll be great. Uh, I'll keep that in mind. But I think right now I'm going to go get ready for class. Shouldn't you? Emmy shrugs unconcernedly. Nah, I got plenty of time. I noticed that she's not wearing a watch. Are you sure? Another careless shrug. Not really, but I've got to finish my routine. See you later, Hisao. Uh, yeah, see ya. <laughs> I'm not sure whether this morning's experiment was a success or a failure, but I'll admit that I do feel slightly good about getting out there this morning. And like Emmy said, I just need to keep at it in order to get better, right? Practice makes perfect, or something like that. It's nice at least to feel like I've taken some semblance of control over my own health. I'll try to I'll have to try to keep this up. You go, Hisao, you do stuff. Hey, oh wow, look at the wall. The wall is totally different. It's it's painted a lot now. I head back to the dorms to wash and change into my uniform, trying to resist the urge to take a really long and hot shower. I'm tired from all the running, so I just want to unwind, but I don't want to break my slowly building routine of getting to school before the morning rush. Aw, oh, you're so punctual, Hisao. After taking a long shower anyway, <laughs> I dry myself off and get out of the stall to put on my clothes. Oh, out of nowhere, it's totally Kenji. Kenji, are you naked in here with me? Out of nowhere, a shadow appears within the mist. Looming and radiating, radiating malicious intent, it bursts through the fog. Malicious intent. Uh-oh. Oh, no, it's totally Kenji. <laughs> Sup? Uh, what are you doing here? What the hell? You scared me. What's your problem? I should be asking you that. I've been looking for you all over the place, man. What do you mean, all over the place? I want to ask if he's been looking for me like that, like that, stark naked, but hold my tongue back. <laughs> I finally realize I'm still naked too and quickly hold up my shirt in front of me. But Kenji doesn't seem to notice a thing. Yeah, he's kind of like blind, dude, so he probably... Where did he get this leaf, by the way? Why is Kenji... This leaf on his... I know that's like a Japanese, like, joke censoring type thing, you know, a leaf over the crotch, but... 
<laughs> his glasses are fogged up, but then why doesn't he wipe them off? Is his vision so bad it's like he's perpetually seeing through fog? You know, your room and yeah, that's it. Hey, I mean, I still had to get up though. Whatever, it's not important. Can I borrow some money? Uh, he puts on an innocent face and looks away, trying very hard to look very casual. It doesn't work. He's as tr he's as transparent as his windowpane sized glasses. I wonder if Kenji's like not even really that blind and he just is like playing it up to act like a fool on purpose. I don't know. I have no idea. He's pretty hilarious though. Talking ne neutrally like this, wearing nothing, feels awkward. Actually, somehow it's even more awkward to be naked in front of someone when they can't see me being naked. They say nothing of the fact that he's naked as well. I try to brush the feeling off with little success. Uh, money? Sure. Awesome! Wait, why do you need it? Uh, can't you just give it to me because I have the goodwill not to run through your pockets while you're in the shower? I could have, but I exercise restraint. And in the end, isn't that the thought that counts? Come on, be a pal. <laughs> this makes no sense. If it's the thought that counts, I should be, or I should withhold payment, since his thoughts were clearly so impure and his intentions are probably even more sinister since he can't tell me what they are. I say as much to him. I'm offended, man, but if that is your game, then fine. I guess I have no choice. I want to order a pizza, and I already had most of the cost of the pizza. I need your help for the rest. I get some of that pizza too, right? No. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah, I would you give you some, but you have class. Uh, you don't have time to eat a pizza. What about you? I'm not going to class. I have to wait for the pizza and pay the guy, and then eat it. It's not easy. You have to obtain the pizza stealthily. If you don't, everyone will see you, and the pizza, and they will ask for a slice. <laughs> it's a hard world out there. Everyone wants peace. Then, you're left pizza-less in an unforgiving world. It's happened before. That's how I know. Every day, I plan my vengeance so that when the people who wronged me order a pizza, I will be there, ever vigilant. <laughs> Kenji strikes a dramatic pose, completely without irony. God, I love Kenji. He's the best. <laughs> but yeah, I only need like 400 yen. Please, you're my only hope. I can't go outside and buy my own pizza, it's too far. I try not to go out unless it's absolutely necessary. Let me tell you what happened the last time I went out without carefully planning it out in advance. I was outside. I can't remember what I was doing. Something. Standing? Maybe wondering how I got there. And then, out of nowhere, it happened. Like a flash of lightning, splitting the sky, like how you split a sandwich into two equal pieces to make it more manageable to hold and eat. A bird crapped on my head. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> that's the best. Oh, man, that's the best story I've ever read, ever. <laughs> it was the second most shocking moment of my life. What was the first? He ignores me and keeps going. I want to grab him and shake him. Is he just trying to keep momentum? I'll go with that. Even if it's more likely he just didn't hear me. It was like in the openings to some kind of anime show. You know how there's always a part where the main dude is fighting his rival and they fly at each other and clash swords and there's like big dramatic colored auras and zoom. It was like that, but with poo. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> so yeah, I need some money, please. Don't leave me hanging, man. I only need like 1,000 yen. <laughs> I thought it was 400. Okay. What? I'll pay you back, I swear. You better. That's what it means to borrow stuff. I don't know when I'll be able to pay you back. You have one week. Ah! <laughs> Kenshi winces and makes a noise like a dying cow, a particularly, a, a particularly disturbing fact, given that his baton is conducting freely. <laughs> You're not, you're not supposed to be so tight-assed about money between brothers in arms, man. Men have it bad enough as it is. Did you know that male porn stars only make about half of what female porn stars make? <laughs> I didn't know that. If that's actually true, I did not know that. That doesn't mean anything unless you're a porn star. So maybe I am a porn star, on the side, struggling to make ends meet as I fight the feminist agenda. And you can't even spot me, your crumbs, you bastard. Nobody understands. Nobody. Wouldn't feminists be against pornography in the first place? 
this feminist agenda stuff again. This stuff is important. I can see that you don't give a shit, but this is serious here. Feminists are a dangerous enemy, make no mistake. You take them lightly, and you wake up in the morning with a knife in your back. Bam! Out of nowhere. How do you wake up in the morning if someone stabbed you in your sleep? Women are terrible at stabbing things. <laughs> I thought you just said don't take them lightly. Well, I don't mean... <laughs> I mean, don't take them lightly for the big things. Individually, they're not a threat. But if there was some kind of war, like a big war with men on one side and the feminist forces on the other side, it would be pretty ugly. And then... And that day will come when the feminists come out of their central top secret worldwide feminist headquarters and say it's on... Er, and say, it's on now, motherfuckers! <laughs> That's the best. You're being ridiculous. There's no big worldwide feminist headquarters building. Where would they even hide that? I mean, it'd have to be massive. You couldn't hide that on Earth. Someone would notice a big fortress with women only in it. Who said it was on Earth? I turn away from Kenji and start practicing frowning faces in a mirror so that I can figure out what kind of frown will best express my emotions. He can't see me from this distance anyway. Which unfortunately means that he just keeps on ranting without any regard or sense or sensibility. <laughs> yeah, there's a war going on. A war not many know about, but it's a great one that will one day boil over and encompass all of the known world. Then, we'll have to pick sides. We will have to make a stand. In fact, it's happening right now. Imagine it, the bloody battlefield. A vicious conflict without end. I almost gave up when I thought this cause was silly. When I grew tired of the bleakness of our fight. When I mistook the time the power went out for a feminist raid and thought the, thought the end was near. But then I realized that if I gave up, it would all be over. And I was like, whoa. And I knew I had to get serious because I am the last sane man in an insane world. It's about duty. Must be a pretty crappy movement if it all hinges on one naked guy ranting in a bathroom at another naked guy. So, can I have the money? <laughs> He's blocking the way out. It's getting cold because I'm still naked, and I want to go to class, so I agree to spot him the money. Awesome. Thanks, dude. We should go bowling later on. Bowling? Yeah, it's the ultimate sport. There are almost no women bowlers either, making it almost the manliest sport. Should I wear my pink bowling shirt with matching shoes, or their pastel green with flower accents? They're her bowling clothes? Maybe. Anyway, you had better pay me back. I can pay you back in stuff, right? I don't have the time to ask him to elaborate on what that means. I don't know, I have to get to class. You're kind of in the way. <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah, I don't want to hold you up, and I have some stuff to do myself. The time has come. The time for what? I just like saying that. <laughs> okay, now, the time has really come. For what? I have to use the bathroom. Get out of it. I was just going to, and what does that mean? It's a big bathroom. So, I have to be alone or I can't go. The pressure. Okay, what if someone else comes in? I'll think of something. I give him my practice frown, and it looks kind of silly reflected in his glasses. He either doesn't notice or doesn't see anyway, so I get dressed and run back to my room, feeling as though an eternity has passed since I woke up. <laughs> you have done a lot of crap, Asal. You really, really have since you got up this morning. That is time, that's time I will never get back. I'll get him for this somehow. But right now, I have to get a class. I'm the first person in class today, although I think I'm a little too early. Then again, sitting alone here for 20 minutes sure beats having to suffer that time with Kenji. The combination of fatigue, frustration, and boredom starts making me feel very tired. I black out for a second, waking up when my head hits the surface of my desk. Ouch, I've done that before. Rubbing my forehead, I realize this is as good a reason as any to stay up for now and stop coming to class so early later. Eventually, I hear a tapping noise outside in the hallway, and Lily's tall figure appears in the doorway. Excuse me, I got the burpees, guys. God dang it, those burpees. She's not in this class, so she must have some other business. Maybe she's looking for Hanako. Lily stops at the door, looking hesitant, as if she was a vampire who can't come in unless invited. I consider doing so because she looks rather lonesome standing there. She steps in on her own accord though, after straining her skirt and shirt collar as if it was of importance to look prim when entering our classroom. Oh, hi there, Lily. Excuse me. 
She calls into the quiet classroom with a probing, delicate voice. I realize the silence might unnerve her because of her blindness, so I break it. Good morning, Lily. Oh. Hisao? So? Good morning. I didn't hear you come in. I wonder if she thinks it's suspicious I didn't say anything to her before. It's likely, if I were to tell too big a lie now, it would sink me. Well, I was already here, just asleep until now. Oh, have you seen Hanako today, by any chance? No, she seems to come in only just before the bells ring, or after that. Do you want me to tell her something for you? No, it's fine. It's strange, but I think we're the only two people in this school right now. I didn't hear anyone else on my way here. Oh, that's weird. I wonder if it's like a weird holiday that neither of them are aware of. But Lily would have known. She's been there for so long. I shouldn't have gotten up so early today, I guess. You're chastising yourself for doing something that other people should? Punctuality is a good thing. I think so, anyway. It's a very busy morning today. The festival's coming up soon, and today is the deadline for event registration, budget reports, and any other official paperwork. It could be that everyone is trying to complete the necessary forms at the last minute. Maybe that's why it's so quiet today. Hi, hi! <laughs> Misha pops in the room with Shizune as if on cue, shouting with a loudness that makes Lily visibly flinch. Hi, Hee-chan! Hi. Uh-oh. Look, it's the class representative! Hello! <laughs> Lily smiles, probably amused by Misha's or Shizune's use of the word look. Good morning! Of course, you're not the representative of this class, right, right? I'm not. Lily seems a little more guarded in her answers to Shizune than she was with me the other day. I guess they don't really get along at all. Then I realize that Lily might actually not know Shizune is present, and she's trying to detect whether or not she is to know who she's talking to. For all she knows, she's talking to Misha, but knowing that she and Shizune are practically inseparable, she might expect Shizune being the one that actually talks. Damn, how complicated. I decided to help Lily out for my own peace of mind more than anything else. You're here early, Shizune. Oh. You are here even earlier than us. Misha puffs out her cheeks angrily. Why is she getting angry? Does she feel emotions on Shizune's behalf too? <laughs> it's not that weird though that Shizune didn't like my little comment. It's true, I was here earlier than them, so me saying something like that could definitely be misinterpreted as anything. Especially to Shizune, who doesn't have the benefit of hearing tone to gauge intent. Before I can start weighing whether or not I should apologize, Shizune has already moved on. Hmm? Class rep, it's a good thing you're here. We have to talk. <sighs> the festival's coming up in three days, right? Every other class has already handed in their projected budget reports for their events. Even the first years, except you. Wahahaha! <laughs> There's still time to hand it in, isn't there? Uh-oh, Shizune looks pissed. Today! The deadline's today! You're certainly taking your time, aren't you? If I had it my way, I'd had, I, uh, I'd have had all of the necessary paperwork days ago, but someone had to say, the deadline, please extend it. Yes, that was me. Planning something on this scale is not a small task, and a week is too small a time frame to expect a whole class to work out such a complex issue completely. Uh-oh. Argument here. Bitch fight. Woo woo. <laughs> Do you want to know what's harder than is distributing the funds for one class event? Handling the same matter for every class in the school, and then some. The one who does that is me. Misha puts her hands on her hips and stands up straight. Wow, she's really getting into the role. Lily doesn't look like she's very amused, though. <laughs> hey, Shizune, aren't you being a little too hard on her? There's still a whole day left. Please, Sisao, it's alright. Lily seems happy I'm taking her side, but a little conflicted that I might not think she can take care of herself. If this is about the budget, then I'm disappointed you think I've forgotten about it. I understand how important it is. Oh. Then, can I have it, please? Shizune, said, Shizune, she might not have it on her at this exact second. It's not here right now. I asked two students to take care of it for me. Students from my class. She emphasizes the last sentence, much to my surprise. She knows about Shizune and Misha's efforts to rope me into the student council? I guess word must have gotten around, so now she's using me as ammo against Shizune. This just gets better and better. 
Uh oh, and we'll see what Shizune's response is next episode. I'm just about out of time here, guys. Uh, but a lot happened. It was once again a very eventful episode. <laughs> God, that Kenji bathroom scene was absolutely ridiculous. This game is so much fun. I'm so glad that you guys are still enjoying it. If you guys enjoyed this episode, please be sure to hit the like button, share the video, and favorite it. Also, be sure to subscribe to me if you guys haven't already. For those of you who have, thank you so much for all of your support. You guys are the best in the world. I love every single one of you. And as always, it was great seeing you. Bye-bye. I got so many keys. I got so many bombs that I can blow up shop keys with. Look at all these spiders, too. What is going on with this nonsense? I do want a spirit heart anyway. Uh, we'll go into the next one. We'll go into this one. What's this? Ah! 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 Why is it shaky again? It's so creepy every time. Why does it do that?